So, uh, we are going to, to see some uh, basic principles, and normally for the common user, when you go to, to the web, so this is my, my blog, so you go to the web, what do you do? You type a name here. So it can be just a class of cours.toutin. Uh, and this way, you have access to, to the web page. More formally, this should be written that way. So you have http colon slash slash and cours.toutin. So what does it mean? It means that when you type this, you give an address. So cours.toutin, it's what you want to access, so it's a computer. And on that computer, you will have access to a server. And the server will give you some information. And you also define, in that strange <coughs> thing here, you also define a protocol to access to the information. And this protocol is called HTTP. So well, we will go see more detail what does it mean. But if we look in another way, what do you do? You, from this, you understand that you want a page. So when I type return here, after typing the address, then my client here, my brother, understands that I want a page and send a request to a server which has been identified by cour.tuta. So here you send a message, I want this page, and here you have a result. It's the information. Okay, so here it's what everybody understands about the web. So I type this and I have a result. So now we are going to see in more details what do we have inside here? How it works? Because here is what uh, common people see about, uh, about the web. So, in fact, it is a more complex thing because cours.tuta doesn't exist really. It's something, it's a name that has been invented to remember, uh, to help you to remember the address. In fact, here we have to translate this address into something that the network can <coughs> understand. And then we will call a service called DNS. So we'll have a first call to the network. And the DNS will answer me another address. And this address is no more understandable by normal user. It's just understandable by the network. And this address gives you the location of the server. So, of course, when you read that, 192, 108, 119, <coughs> and uh, 138, for you, it means nothing. It's just number. But for the network, it tells you where is the information. So what you are going to do when you are at the network layer level, then you are going to send this request, I want this page, to this address. So now we are really in the network. But you cannot talk directly to a server, because this server can be located everywhere on Earth. And so you don't have a direct access to, to that server. So in fact, you are going to talk to some <coughs> intermediary equipment or uh, intermediary system, what we call in the internet, routers. And so a router will get the request, or will get the information here. I want this page. And the router will have to find where to send again the information. And so you will send it to another router. This router will have also a knowledge of the network and is able to send the information to the server. And that way, the information is copied from router to router and arrived to the server. 
So from your point of view, you talk directly to that equipment because this information here arrives here, but in fact, it has been copied from system to system to arrive to the computer, to the cell. Of course, here I don't give you any way how to solve this, how we'll find the next router. But we will see that in uh, the rest of the classes on in the second year, when you will come to, if you are DSN uh, Master of Science, you will see uh, that during the network class I gave in, uh, in October. So we'll see how we can organize this communication between all these routers and how we can structure the, the network. So here, we don't go in that detail because it's a little bit more complex. If you are master specialized, you will be more lucky because you will not have to wait one year, but next month we will talk about it. So, here we have this, and then we have an answer. So it's a web page or a part of the web page. So here, the problem is that the network, and we will see why in this class, cannot carry very, very long messages. So what we do in all the technology we will see is that we cut messages into smaller messages. We will call that a packet during this class, but we'll cut it and we send these messages on the network and we follow the same rules that we send it to a router and the router has to find another router, etc., etc., until we arrive to the destination. So what is important to notice is that in the internet, it's not true in all the technologies, but in the internet, you have no guarantee that you have the same way to go from one point to another and come back. The route can be totally different and generally is different. So we cut this information and at the end, we recombine all the fragments, all the pieces, and we get the entire message. So, what we have to see now is how we can create a, such a complex system, and how we can work, of course, for the web, but it can work for other programs. For example, if I want to watch a movie on uh, YouTube, or to listen to to radio or to make a phone call, how we, have, we can have a system that works in all these situations and can adapt to, uh, to new things. So the goal is, in fact, to work on a concept. We will not use this, uh, <coughs> this term after, but a black box. It means that, for me, the network is a black box. Here we have a very good example. I want the IP address of the network address of core.tuta. I call a, a resolver. I don't know how it works, but I know that I will have an answer. And I, will, I don't have to look at what I have inside. What is important is how I talk with this black box and how I can understand the result given by the black box. And how it is done here is not my problem at this time. And after, of course, I will have to, to work on the black box and see how I can implement it. But what is important to see here is that, in fact, I will work on a communication between me and a black box. So I will create what we will call a service. It means that I will just define this interaction. So network, it will be the same. And this is what we, you understand from the network, is that I ask for a page, and I get a result. So for example, here the client will think, I am interacting <laughs> with the network, I send a request, and after a certain period of time, I get an answer. I know the format to talk with the network, I know the format to talk with the server, 
but I have no idea and I don't want to understand how it is implemented. What is important is interaction with me, interaction with the server, but inside, I don't care. And the server has the same uh, thing. It's, I am waiting from request from the network, so I am <laughs> sleeping all the time, and from time to time, I got a request on the network. So I wake up, I process the request, and I send the an answer. So you have three times. You have the time of the client, <coughs> you have the time of the server, and you have the time of the network. And what is important to see, and when we will start building protocols, we will have this problem, is that nobody has this vision. What I show you here, nobody in the network knows that. Because it's located everywhere on Earth. So when you are in front of your computer, you just have a vision of interaction between you and the network. When you are seated close to the server, you see interaction between the server and the network. But you will have to understand things, the reality of the world, just from this interaction. So if you have interactions that create ambiguities, one may believe something and the other may believe another thing. And that will be a problem because both systems will not react the way we expect them. So it will be something very important when we will develop protocols is to avoid ambiguities or possible ambiguities because we don't have a full knowledge of what happens everywhere. We just see what happens at your, out your door. So just the interaction between me and the network. <coughs> so it's something we have to do to work carefully is to avoid when we develop protocols on big width. So we are going to, to see that more in more detail when we will study protocols. And we will create one protocol that will not work because at one period of time we will create an ambiguity. And one will believe it works, the other will say, okay, it works, but it doesn't work the same way. So that's something very important, and ambiguities is the thing we have to avoid in networking. And that's why it's very, very complex to do things, because it's implemented by a lot of people. For example, here you may have a Microsoft client and a Linux server. And the person that developed the client and the person that developed the server are different. So they, are read, they have read some paper, what we will call standard, and they have to understand the standard the same way. And write a code that is in fully conformance with the standard. So that's something complex. And of course, when you write paper, or you read a, a book, or you read the news on your newspaper, people may understand the thing differently. In networking, when you write a standard, everybody has to understand the thing the same way. And that's something very complex, we will see. But it's not so easy to, to do it. And when you do it, it's very boring. And that's what sta why standards are very boring, because they try to avoid ambiguity. But we, we'll look at that in, in more detail uh, in the rest of the class. So, it's a very, very interesting class because here, you are, with that, you understand everything. The network is a black box. So, you can leave it, that. You can stay with this definition if you don't want to understand what we have inside the network. But if you are here, Normally, it's to understand what we have inside. So we are going to see that this black box is composed of black boxes. <laughs> so we have black boxes inside the black boxes. And 
when we combine all these black boxes, we create a network. Now we have to put light on black boxes to, to see <coughs> how they work. So what we'll do during this class. So this black box, it means that I just see interactions between client and server on the black box. So I say, I want this page. So something happened in the black box. I don't know why. But I know that my request here, I want a page, will produce, after a certain period of time, something on the other side that is, I want this page. Or this guy wants the page. And I will have an answer. This will start a process. And the process will have a result. And the result is a web page. So I started with HTML. And then, after a certain period of time, the answer will arrive correctly at the, uh, the, uh, the source or at the requester at the client. So here what is important to, to see is this interaction. So you see that we, you have four possible arrows. Here, you, can, you cannot define over arrows. So this one is, I want to start an interaction. Here, another guy wants to start an interaction. Here, I have the answer. And here, I got the answer. So it's all the possible things you, you can have. And in uh, definition of uh, protocol, all these arrows as a name. So here, here is a request. Here we will call that arrow indication. Here we will have a response. And here we will have a confirmation. So we will give a name to all uh, this impossible interaction between you and the black box. And what is in the middle is also, so we have specified interaction. And now what we have also to specify is how we are going to formalize the information that is sent from one point to another. Because we, have, we are on two different parts of the world, and so they have to understand the same way, the information. So it's here that we will have to create what we call a protocol that will standardize this interaction. So if you want to understand anything on network, you have to understand the answer to three questions. One is how I can go down. So it means that here I have my black box, so I will represent my black box that way. So here I'm sending a request. A request arrives to another part, and it goes up. So if you know how you go down, if you know how you go up, and if you know how you go from one point to another, then you understand all how your network works. So it's what we are going to see now in more details on the, a model and also in, in some examples. So protocols. We can give two definitions of protocols. One that is a very uh, descriptive rule of protocol is that it's common rules between two or several pieces of equipment. Several pieces of equipment. So it's a definition. So you write, you open a book, and this book, the standard, will describe how you do this interaction. So it will give data format, so how you structure the information you are sending. It gives you also how you represent the information. And it gives you also what you have to do when you receive a message. Or if you receive 
something, for example, a request, as we saw so narrow uh, here. Then from this how how you translate that into something you are going to send on the network. And here, it's a black box. So it means that here I, I put something very simple. Let's say here I'm sending a request. Here I get the indication. But I don't tell you how it works. So here I put a dotted arrow, a dotted line. But in fact, here you can have a lot of, lot of interaction between both entities before getting this indication. I don't know. Here is not just a message you send on network. It can be plenty of messages. We don't know here because it's totally uh, uh, it's a black box, so we, we have no information. So here, things have to be developed or written without any ambiguities because two implementers have to write protocol that works well and interact each other. So it means that we have to define that on <coughs> books, on paper, on what we will call a standard. So this is uh, the first definition of protocol that just describes describe what is a protocol. You have another definition of protocol. A protocol is a way to change the behavior of, uh, of a channel. So it means that it's a result. Here, for example, we, we, we saw that in, uh, in this example, I can just send information to the next router because I have a wire between me and the router. So physically, I can send information to that wire. But if I implement the internet protocol, I will change the behavior of my wire because now with my wire and this internet protocol, I am able to join any other computer on Earth. So the protocol will change the way my uh, link works. Or for example, we will see that in, uh, in more detail. For example, here I have a lot of errors, transmission errors on my link. And I put a protocol that corrects via this error. So I'm changing the behavior of my links because before my protocol, I had errors, transmission errors. And after, after I put this protocol, I have no more transmission error. So that's another definition of protocol that tells you how, it, what is the result of a protocol. So here, for example, if you look at one document, document. here that tells you how the protocol is defined. So this is a kind of standard you will see a lot if you continue in, uh, with DCN or next, uh, next month. Because this document that are produced by a standardization organization that is called IETF, Internet Engineering Task Force, and this standard defines the protocol of internet. So what is very strange with uh, these standards is that they are written in ASCII. So you don't have, a, it's not a Word document, a PDF document. It's an ASCII document. And even the drawings are made using ASCII. Here, for example, you have some exchange. And so you have no nice picture, but only ASCII art to describe everything you, you are doing. So of course, when you see these kind of things, you, have, you may leave the class and say, network are not for me, because it <laughs> looks very, very boring to, to read all that thing, and I will, ne I will never read uh, all that document. That's true. You will not read it, except if you have to implement some web component or HTTP component in your network. So if you have to do that, 
and you want to understand how a network or this part of the protocol react when you receive this message, then you will have to look at this document. And normally you will find your, the answer to your question on that document. But if you read it from the first page to the last page, maybe you will have a very not very clear vision of what the protocol is doing. Because it helps you to implement, it's not to help you to understand what is this protocol. So you have to learn how to read these kind of things. So don't read it for the first line to the last line, but know how to navigate on the document, go to what you want, and if you and skip some part that are not very interesting for you. So that's uh, some exercise uh, you will have to do on uh, this kind of document. So here, for example, my request, I want this page, has been translated to something that is here. So in the HTTP protocol. And the HTTP protocol, in fact, is something in ASCII. So here I will find a request, get, slash, which is, I want the first page of the website. Then I give more details on the version of the HTTP protocol I am using. Here it's 1.1. And then, how to separate things is because we are using carriage return and line feed to go on the next information. Then the next information says that, that when I'm opening a connection, we are going to see what it means with a server, then here I keep alive so I don't close the connection very, uh, at the beginning or when I got the answer, but I continue to have the connection after because Maybe I have more requests to send to, to the server. Then I give a, <coughs> sorry, a description of my um, client. And I say that the client accept, can accept uh, HTML, so a way to, to describe pages. Then I say that I'm accepting French language, English <coughs> language, so the server can adapt the answer to French or English. And I am using, I can accept this, uh, this uh, way to code uh, characters. So, for example, a uh, uh, letter with accent, accented letter. So I can use uh, this format, this format, it's the right. So I describe what can, uh, I can do, and the server will process. So you see that only one gate. In fact, I say I want this page, normally it's just this. But we add a lot of information to describe the environment. And this information doesn't come from the user, it comes from the web uh, client. So it has been added by the web client to the information the user wants. And you see here that the performance is not very good because here it's four or five characters, get slash, what I want. And, in fact, the protocol had a lot of information. So, this is one protocol, but if you know the notion of uh, black box, so here, this was my black box for HTTP, so the way to interact <coughs> with the other guy, and I say it's a black box, now we see that in fact, it's formatted that way. The interaction is formatted that way. I'm described in RFC 2616. Uh, but if we look here, you see that we have another protocol. It means that in reality, here I have interacted with another black box. This black box is called TCP. And TCP is here to fragment the information. For example, here I have an answer. The answer is very big. So TCP will cut it in several parts. And TCP on the other side will collect all the information to make only one message that will be sent to that black box. And 
this black box will give me the information. So this is one thing, and TCP will be used also, we will see that at the end of the class, for flow control and error correction. So error correction means that if I am losing one fragment, then TCP will detect that and will ask for the transmission of this fragment. <coughs> and flow control means that if I am sending too much information in the network, I may saturate some equipment in the middle, and TCP will detect it, and will reduce the speed, the sending speed, to avoid saturation, congestion of intermediary equipment. So we are going to see that in, in more details at, at the end of the class. So here is for TCP. And then what I see is that I have over black boxes, over protocol, and it's IP. So if from that you cannot uh, see that, but I tell you that IP in fact is played on intermediary system, and each intermediary system will analyze the IP header. And this way, by analyzing the IP header, it will be able to locate the next up, and the next stop will analyze the IP header, locate the next stop, etc., etc. And for example, here you see that in it's at, at that place in the IP header that I put <coughs> the IP address we saw before: 192.108.119.138, which is the IP address of the server. And of course, when you will have an answer, the answer, the source will be here, and the destination will be. And etc. etc. So after IP, I have a no-go black box protocol, which is Ethernet, etc. So you see that we we can add, but so it depends where you are located. When you are a network engineer. You will not look at all this complexity. If you are an IP engineer, we will look how to send a packet from one point to another. Or how a packet that arrives in my router live on the right direction. If you are an HTTP engineer, then you will not care about the network. You say the network is almost perfect, but I have to study how I can create a protocol that allows me to, I am French, I want my page in French. Or I want to have small images because I am looking at it on a PDA, on an iPhone, and not in, and I want a very big image because I am using it on my computer. So, but you will not care about IP. You say, okay, it's send information. So every time you focus on one black box and you look at it and see how it works. But when you focus on another kind of black box, then you forget about how it is implemented. What is important to understand is how you interact with it. So these arrows here, and we are going to, to see that in a moment. So here is the example. So it's what I represent here by... Uh, Rectangle, blue rectangle. So here you have the same thing. So here I send a get. The other one receives a get. He sends me the HTML page and I receive the HTML page. So it's my vision if I am an HTTP or a web designer, I will look at this level. But this communication is totally virtual. It exists in a sense that when I'm sending a GET to a Google server in the US, the Google server in the US will receive that GET. So it's something that exists. But I don't have a direct connection with the Google server. So this is not a really physical communication between me and the Google server. So, in fact, what do I have? It's 
I am using so black box that allow me, for example, a audible transmission between me and the Google server. In the IP world, it's what we call the TCP protocol. So as I said before, TCP will secure or make reliable the communication between both ends. So if something is lost here, we can correct, or TCP can correct it. And if TCP correct it, it will be totally invisible from the web server. Maybe it will take more time. So we will see because it takes more time to open a connection or to get the page. But we will not receive something that says, OK, you have lost the pages, or you have lost one part of the information. So from this point of view, the red point of view, if the blue box corrects something, it's OK. You don't see it. So it means that here, my TCP protocol make a reliable link between me and Google. And I'm sure that nothing will be lost because there is a magic thing in the TCP protocol that allows me to correct things. But I don't know. I don't care. I'm just a web designer. And I know I can rely on TCP to send correctly the information. <coughs> now, if I am a TCP designer, <coughs> I know that I have some guys that create strange applications, like, like <coughs> web, like uh, uh, video streaming, etc. So I don't understand what they do with the data. I don't care. But my goal is to send correctly the information from one point to another. And I will develop the best way to do it and adapt it to a <coughs> lot of uh, situations on the net. So here it's end-to-end. -end. It's what we call an end-to-end -end protocol. Because it's, we don't care about routers here. We just have two computers at both ends that seems that uh, to, uh, to talk directly. But in fact, they believe they talk directly. But in fact, the information will be copied from router to router. And from copying from routers to routers, and you, uh, you will achieve this end-to-end -end communication. But in fact, here is just point-to-point -point communication between a lot of routers to reach a destination. For example, in the internet, it's between 20, normally it's between 20 and 30 routers before you get a server. So, you have this, and if you continue, you can say, okay, but here I have, for example, a radio link. So here I cannot send directly the information. I have to adapt my transmission to the specificity of the radio link. So I have to uh, code my 0 and 1 to something that are able to be sent on the radio link. And to do that, I have to code my 0 and 1 to something that the other, the other end will understand as 0 and 1. Because if we don't have the same way to code the information, of course, the other one will not understand. So you see that here. When you develop your web browser, <coughs> you just see the communication, but and you don't care about all these specificities. When you develop your web browser, you say, OK, I have direct connection with my Google server. But in fact, little by little, you, you see that you have a lot of complexity, but you never focus on the big picture. You just focus on one part when you want to study it. Uh, in more details. You don't look at all the system because it will be too much complex to, to do that. 